Hi, this is Andy and John at Car Repairs Made Easy. And today we replaced a center link, or maybe called a relay rod, or a drag link, depending on your parts store. We replaced this on a 1996 Chevy Impella SS. Um, as you can see, this is a dirty part, so we've already replaced it, but we did record the job. So we're going to let you watch that, and we'll get right to it. All right, now we're underneath the car. We got this thing up on jack stands. You don't want to do this. Two reasons: one, you can't get underneath here unless it's up high enough, and two, you actually need the wheels to be loose because once we take the center link off here and we get the tie rod ends loose from it, then if we need to move the wheel to get it lined back up, then that creates an issue if it's on the ground. So what we need to do here is we're going to take. We have one, two, three, four bolts, four nuts to take off. Um, here for the tie rod ends. Up here at the, uh, that's the pitman arm, and then the idle arm over here. So what we have is an 18 millimeter wrench. Um, we're gonna use our little fancy ratcheting wrench. It makes things easy for us. Just break them loose, and just put one finger on the, I put one finger on the tip, so you feel the bolt, the stud, to make sure it's not turning. Because if it starts to turn, then that creates problems. And then we have to find an alternate way to get it loose. So hopefully we won't have to show you that. Actually, what I want to do, that was a mistake. We need to take the tie rods loose first. Because this is going to have to move that way to get the tie rod, in, tie rod off. I know some of you may say, oh, you're not wearing your safety glasses, which I should be wearing. But that's why I'm reaching way over my head so that I'm not working right directly underneath anything that may fall. And the reason this is getting replaced is the joint here at the pitman arm right there is loose, causes a clunk in the All steering. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the wheel and see if we can show that. See that rocking back and forth right there at the joint? That's the looseness. So get this one loose here. Um, you could easily do this with a ratchet and a socket. You'd need a short one to get up there. Actually, that's probably going to be easier with a wrench, unless you have a flex head ratchet. nuts off of there. What we want to do is, uh, let's see, we're going to take our little mini sledgehammer here. Um, you can use a good size ball peen hammer. We're going to hope that this is enough to knock it loose. You want to try not to hit, hit this way because if you hit the corner of the threads it'll damage them. Then you have to re-thread it. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to hit here. Hopefully that'll be enough to jar this loose and it'll come out. Yeah, don't ever hit the threads. Get that. Nope, that's not wanting to come out. There, there we, we go. go. We got lucky, so we don't have to use power tools to get that loose. See, typically on a lot of these joints, even if you're doing a tie right end out at the end of the wheel where the <laughs> tire is, if you hit the steel on the outside of where the joint goes through, that jars that loose where the taper is so it'll come out. And I just gave it a tap here to kind of push it out. That didn't hurt anything. There it goes. That one's coming loose. Now we'll be able to get these out the rest of the way when we get the pitman arm and the idle arm loose. Now the reason, see I hit it that way, that's why I made sure I left these on first or last. I'll take this one off. We're at four minutes, come on Andy, you gotta work faster. 
<laughs> well, you know me, I can't do two things at once. I have a hard enough time walking and breathing. Well, I guess it's tight because I'm going the wrong way. Yo, Nitch, you're going the wrong way. Yeah, well, you know, I'm working from the opposite side, so I have to remember <laughs> to go the opposite direction. Yeah, I remember a lot of times if you see a bolt and it's upside down from what you're used to and you're underneath, it's always the opposite of what you think. Happens to all of us. I've done it myself. It's got brand new shocks on it. I didn't see that before. Yeah, I saw that. Alright. Now, what I'm going to do, make sure these come all the way off. That's loose. Now, so I don't, this thing don't hit me in the face, which I'm sure a lot of you might want to see because that'd be pretty funny. Um, I'm just going to put this on by a couple threads. Same thing over here. So that way when it comes loose, it'll just drop down and I'll be able to unthread it by hand and pull it out without anybody getting hurt. So now, let's see, where am I going to hit this thing? Probably here, huh? Yeah, just on the that sides of tough. each one. Uh, I'll try to hit me here first. Well, the tie rod came out. But that's not coming loose. <clears throat> Don't worry, this is nothing to worry about. There, there it go. goes. We came loose. We that came one's loose. loose. Uh, oh, let's see. I'm roll over. Oh. You need to spin around? Yeah. I'll see you if keep I can your... move over here. All right, you just keep your fingers crossed and I don't let go of this hammer. Yeah, don't hit me in the camera. <laughs> don't care about my eyes. There, there we go. Nice, beautiful. That's what I was hoping for because I didn't want to have to use power tools for this. Now see, especially one reason we decided to use the hammer on these tie rod ends there where they came in the front was because um, we're reusing those. We're only putting this center link in that we're taking off. So like a pickle fork or something like that, and you damage the boot, you ooze all the grease out. Now you got a mess and you're probably gonna be replacing tie rods. <laughs> all right, we're gonna grab the new part Almost. and we'll be right back. All right. Okay, now here's our new center link or commonly called drag link or maybe even a relay rod. Here's our old one. We just matched them up to make sure that they are the same and they are um, only difference is the see the hole there might have pushed the grease in a small hole there and they use these what's called castle nuts see it looks like the top of a castle you line that slot up with the hole and stick a cotter pin in we'll show you that when we get that to that point um, I'm gonna try to set this in here Get, see if I can line all this mess up in one big piece. Yeah, we'll line these up. We'll get the tie rods in first. Um, that way we can put it all in one shot. That side came loose. Let's try this. Put this one back on and hold that there. What the heck? That's not, it's this one. I'll just get this started for now. I'm gonna come over here. I'll put this in so before it falls out. I hope these threads aren't different. Is that a different thread? It's a coarse. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's just dirt in there. But we'll clean that up as we get going. 
All right, now those won't fall out. Now I can just line this up. This one is attached to the pitman arm is attached to the steering gear. So that's the one we want to line up first. And then the idler arm, you can see over here, moves freely. And we can line that up. After I put one of these up here. Before we tighten this down, I'm going to show you what we meant by pickle fork, in case you didn't know. I don't like that. Where's the other? There it is. And I'll show you how it's used, but I'm not going to use it, but you'll get the idea. Which way? This way. All backwards. All right, now that everything's going to be stable, what you would do is, this is a pickle fork. Why they call it that, I don't know. Maybe they use it to pick up giant pickles or something. Um, this would actually go on these parts. I'll show you here. You'd want to put it this way, the flat side against the part you want to stay in place, and the tapered edge against the part you want to remove. You'd slide it in here, take your hammer, hit this end, and this will wedge itself in and eventually knock the other part off. If you have these rubber boots like this one does, and you're trying to reuse parts, if you use this, you have a real good probability of tearing this boot up, then we'd have to replace the tie rod end, which is why we were happy that we managed to get it out with a hammer. <laughs> Alright, so now all we're going to do is we're going to get one that's not dirty. These are all the same threads. Something's not right here. Because you whacked it. I did bump the thread. Can you get a real good shot of that? Well, you can see where I knocked the thread over. Right there. I bumped it with my hammer. See how that thread's bent right there from swinging a hammer? Yep, it's not real bad. We're going to give this one try since it's not too bad because this does want to start. If it's not real bad like that, sometimes you can get lucky or you need a thread chaser. Oh yeah, see that was fine. It was just enough where it didn't want to spin on by hand. You see one finger, I'm really putting no effort in it. So it wasn't that I forced this nut on there. Alright, we're having a problem here because this stud is spinning. You can see the threads there, they move. Mm -hmm. So that's where our big huge channel locks are going to come into play. So we're going to try this one. I'll try holding it first. Get a little pressure on it like this one. This one's okay. I'll try that over there. Yep. Nope. We're going to need our big channel locks. Yeah, they should still be out. All right, we'll be right back. Okay, now we have our big channel locks here. I'm going to just squeeze these together to push that in a little farther, and hopefully that will hold that stud from spinning. Let's see if we can do this so you can see. Yeah, if you can see it's not turning now. That's why these things come in handy. You've seen before we've used it for brakes. Just crank these things down. Alright, now we have that done. I can loosen these up to find out which way the holes are so I know where I need to put this for the cotter pin. Alright, looks like this one's running straight across. Yeah, straight sideways on that one. So, but this thing is not. That'll pull in the end. And we're going to keep our fingers crossed that this don't turn. And by looking there, it doesn't look like it's turning. So. Oh yeah, it's pulling it in. Yep. I want to get these tight, but not overly tight. Because now I need to line that up straight across with that hole. 
think that might do it. We won't know until we grab a cotter pin, but once I get these lined up, we'll do that. Uh, let me get over here. You may need to back up with the light and shoot from here. Yeah, well, hang I? on. I'm trying to, trying to zoom in so they can see the whole the cotter pin. That's right. That one. I can't focus that close. Okay, that's fine. Maybe we there can it goes. I can see it. I'm okay. Okay. All right. Now, I hope this one goes in good. We got to see where the hole is so we have a place to judge by. I think that one was parallel too. Well, it's kind of pointed right at me. Straight across. Oh, like this Straight, one. Yeah. Angle. Okay, so now we have an idea where it's at. You'll have to. I'll get it tight, and then you'll have to judge it. How's that sound? Sounds good. Um, just because I can't see it. Yeah, I have to push up on this with some pretty good pressure because there's the weight of the tires and stuff. I want to pull it down. As you can see, it wants to come back down, so get this up there as far as I can. And make sure we're in the right direction. And that's going to pull it up. myself some more room to swing this wrench. This is another one of those cases where we have these specialty tools. You can buy them. They're not too awful expensive. Um, but if you're going to do a lot of stuff on your car, they could come in handy. Where are we at? More? You're almost right on, but I go another tooth. more a little bit more good there I mean you can do this yourself if I had the flashlight we weren't trying to tape this I could get a cut now that we have the right cotter pins after John hunted through the drawer looking for some and then actually looked in the package again and found out they were in there I'm going to put this one from the other side so you can see how we do it. But you saw I put that through. I'll give you an example here, then I'll turn it around. Your big get... freaking ring. Well, what do you want me to way? do? Push that all the way in, make sure it goes all the way in. You don't want to try to pull it through. So I'm going to do it from the other side to show you what we do next. All this does is keep the, the nut from backing off, and that's it. It doesn't do anything else, doesn't hold anything together. No. What we're going to do is, on this one you'll see one end is shorter. I'll open it up a little bit if I can. My hands are too greasy. And here come the hand cramps. Anyway, if you get a good look there, you'll see one end is shorter than the other. Yep. That gives you a, a place to grab it so you can bend them over. You have two ways to do it. One, you can bend them both at the same time. In the same direction that's fine some people do it that way or just keep your finger on the back so it doesn't back out you can get right on the end with a pair of dikes and you can push one one way this is actually one of the ways i prefer to do it around the side that'll keep it from sliding back out and you can take the other one and go the other way and then just push them down as close as you can get them to the nut here That'll be good, it won't catch on anything. And that'll keep it from falling back out. <sighs> this one here. Hoping I get the right spot. There we go. And then just for, we got some clearance there, just for sake of argument. Show you both ways. Take this one, just shove this up. 
then we can go over the top. Take that one, push that over the top. That's actually a cleaner one, but this one will be fine. It won't touch anything. Um, those are two different ways you could bend them over. That's bent over good, because I'm doing this blind. Okay, no response from the cameraman, so I'll assume that we're good. I'm right. silent because you keep making fun of me. Oh, stop crying. <laughs> now that we have the new one on, I'm going to move this, wiggle the suspension, and you'll see that there's no movement in that joint. See, that doesn't move. If you remember before, that moved up and down. That had a big looseness in there. Right. Now, one thing we do need to do is we're going to grease these earth fittings, put a little bit of grease in there, and uh, we can drop it down. We're good okay. to go. This is your zerk fitting. Now, one thing to remember is you don't want to pump this till grease oozes out. Like how this has grease pushing out of it, that means it was over greased. You want the grease to stay inside. <clears throat> so probably fill this up uh, with this one, probably what, four or five shots with the grease gun. I'm thinking three or two, but just yeah. A, you just need a couple, you need to get some grease in there. It probably should have some in it, but just to make sure we'll put a couple of squirts in there and it'll be good. Okay, now we're all done with the uh, center link on the 1996 Chevy Impella. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the video, learned something, and you can see that this is something you can do to save yourself a fair amount of money. Now, mind you, this car will need an alignment when it's after now that we're done with it, um, but we don't have an alignment machine, so we won't do that. Um, I think that's about it. So we're going to close this out by saying thanks for watching. And make sure you visit our website, which should be right here. Um, visit us on Facebook, on Twitter. Those links will be in the description below, down there. And we will see you next time. Have a nice day.